YouTube, I just finished reading an article that was came out in 2011. Uh, it was published in DailyMail.com. My husband, Cary Grant, force-fed me LSD, and it nearly killed me. Actress Diane Cannon, she's a blonde-haired woman who's 33 years younger than Cary Grant. He takes her in and shows her that he's this successful elderly Hollywood statesman who's arrived. He has a mansion and all the greatest trappings at his mansion and going to parties with Alfred Hitchcock. And uh, also, in, he's an enthusiast of LSD. And he set in his mind, Cary Grant, I guess this thing was his dad was a womanizer and drank. Like when they say that, that somebody's an alcoholic and they're a womanizer, that doesn't mean that they had a couple beers every day. That means that they were drinking hard liquor and that they were cheating on their spouse. So there's a big difference uh, between someone who has a couple beers or a few drinks and it may even drink every day. And I'm not making excuses for alcoholics. I'm saying there's all kinds of alcoholics. The functioning, the, the much more popular alcoholic in society is not consuming hard liquor and drinking to pass out every day. There's all kinds of people who use alcohol in small quantities. And the people that are juicers, the real alcoholics, give everyone else who uses a small amount of alcohol a bad name because whereas with a person who has under a dozen drinks a day let's say you have four to six drinks a day okay the times in your life where alcohol did something that affected others around you on a significant level are going to be a handful of small occurrences that happened when you lost control and drank way too much. Whereas the person who's drinking that much every day, those occurrences are much more often. And, and it's just much deeper and much more painful for everyone around them. I'm not, I'm not excusing alcoholism. I'm not saying that that's good and anyone should do that. But there are certain people that have certain things wrong with them and that alcohol for them is their answer. In Cary Grant's case, his dad was a juicer and locked the mom in an insane asylum and told his son that your mother died and she went away for a ski vacation and that she died. 20 years later he finds out that she's alive. He's a successful like multimillionaire rich actor guy and his mom is in, in some insane asylum in some other country. So according to Cary Grant, he had, uh, he had issues committing to women. And he was a borderline homosexual. I'm guessing he was bi, that there was a guy who considered himself like, that he was in love with Cary Grant, some other guy. So Diane Cannon comes into this picture and they have this relationship where Cary Grant had been married twice before. He didn't want to marry this woman because he said that once we get married, it's going to choke the life out of the relationship. So here, he's this older guy who's been through, through down this road, and this Diane Cannon woman is young. And he's saying, you need to take LSD because he saw her as being flawed and being young. And he thought that this could accelerate to bring her up to this level where he was at. And she fought it. She gave in a couple of times and took it, and it was it was a bad experience. She said that elephants came marching in singing in German. And then uh, another time she said that it, she felt like she was going down a tunnel and uh, she was screaming and shrieking and he wouldn't give her the Valium. It was something where they had a bunch of Valium there too, probably a shot of Valium. And it was like, well, if it gets too bad, I'll... 
And you, you never, you don't ever tell anybody if you're experimenting on somebody and you're going to force them LSD, you don't tell them there's a magic shot that's going to stop this. You don't give them that information. That's mistake number one, okay? Well, honestly, mistake number one is someone who's that adamant about taking that drug, giving them that dose. You would need to work on this person for over a period of a couple of years and microdose them up and up till they got used to it and knew what to expect. Not hit them with, okay, you're going to take it. Here's eight hits of, you know, barrels of orange sunshine. Because that's what it sounds like what he did. This is back in the 60s that it wasn't like one hit with blotter like what we know about now. This was like seeing elephants singing in German. That's a little bit much. So, she ended up uh, on New, at a New Year's Eve party. Uh, she had a dog that she had for 10 years, and she was pregnant. And he got rid of the dog because he said that the dog was going to hurt the baby. She was pregnant. And really what it was, I'm sure, she sat there and petted the dog and then glared at him, giving... Women use animals, as they, they'll put affection on the animal when they're telling the man to go fuck himself. And the man is, it's his house. So that's, this is like a classic, like really messed up relationship. Like anybody could walk in and not know them and just say, well, what you need to do is you, woman, need to stop coddling the dog every time you're mad at your husband and you need to coddle your husband He's jealous of the attention you're giving the dog. Like just common, basic, anybody, like you don't need to take a psychedelic trip to see that, that the relationship is messed up. And that, that this guy, as being 33 years older than this woman, you can't just give her a couple of magic trips and she's going to all of a sudden be fixed and become 30 years older where she has her shit together. Because that's what he didn't like about her. She was sloppy, and she was affectionate to, uh, over affectionate to people, and uh, like she, he said that she, she said he followed her around listing her shortcomings, because he was a Hollywood star, he was a millionaire, and he wanted her to act like she was that royalty, and you don't go getting real friendly with the mailman. Or the help, giving them the wrong idea. Like you, there's this Hollywood, there's this elite thing that he wanted. So, I mean, he was just an idiot for thinking, I can psychedelicize her and she can age 30 years and become a mature woman who parks her car straight and dots her T's and crosses her eyes. And and that, as far as that type of thing, if you're in a relationship with somebody who's on, on you like that, or if you you realize that you're that type of person, you're picking on your significant other, you gotta lay off that. You gotta figure out a way where you can talk about this stuff in broad strokes rather than bringing up the details. Because if you bring up the details, you're hurt. You're gonna hurt that person, and they're gonna take offense, and they're not gonna hear what you're trying to say, which probably is a good message, and they probably know it already. They probably already know. How do you get a person to work on, on that stuff? You can't. You can't. Pointing out their shortcomings is the worst possible thing you can do. So Cary Grant, he, he made classic mistakes. And Diane Cannon, what were you doing with a guy 33 years older than you? I mean, did you think that was going to work out? You didn't think you were going to get pregnant? You were going to have to tell this guy... I'm leaving on New Year's Eve. You kissed him on the cheek and ran out of his life, and then he divorced you, and because he took the dog away. It was a, the dog was like really the dog? Like you got a kid inside of you, and that's the kid's gonna need its dad. Like so, this is like unbelievably messed up Hollywood story, and it's got the LSD all running through it. You can look it up on the Daily Mail. My husband, Cary Grant. Cary Grant force feed, force fed LSD, and it nearly killed me. And then she comes out um, telling 
at the end of it, she says the doctors that she saw told her, you're lucky to be alive. Because he gave her LSD. And she believed in it. She's, she's saying this to the Daily Mail, which I've got news for you, and I'm not advocating anyone ever force anyone any drug, but no one has ever died from LSD. Okay? They gave an elephant. You can, you can, you can. But I don't believe he would give his wife like a million doses of it. He, he would have given his wife probably, uh, I would say in what's like nowadays a hit of blotter, probably two or four of those. It's probably what he did. Judging from the fact that she saw the elephants come in the room and that they needed to use the Valium, it wasn't one or two hits. It was probably three or four. And it wasn't eight. Okay. Because I, I know I've seen people take eight hits of acid and they can't even function. They can't even talk. Once you go past four, um, when you start peaking, it gets really intense. It gets hairy. So... As we move through time, we see, you know, it's it's like in the early times, like, I don't know, when did it first come around? The 20s and 30s? The 40s and 50s mushrooms? The 40s and 50s, maybe the early, late 40s, early 50s, psychedelic mushrooms first started coming around, and then they were up by like 55 they were like worldwide known, maybe 57. And everyone, the cat was out of the bag then. And they were all over the world. And then LSD comes around 1936. Let's look it up. Either way, this stuff doesn't go back to the beginning of time. They invented LSD in oh my goodness uh, Wikipedia here we go I think it was 1936 last 12 hours oh boy I'm gonna have to remake this video aren't I and as of 2017 10% of people have used LSD at some point in their life well 0.7% used it in the last year most popular in the 60s to the 80s. Albert Hoffman, 1938. So, but he first discovered the hallucinogenic pro properties in 1943. In the 50s, the, the CIA used it for MK Ultra mind control. They were they had this operation um, Midnight Kiss where they would send these prostitutes into these bars where these guys were and have these women take these guys home and dose them in some seedy motel and try to, and then write down. They would have cameras set up. There's a movie, uh, uh, Bad Times at the El Royale, where they show this hotel that's set up for filming. One-way mirrors and they've got cameras and there's bugs in all the rooms. And so this this is, it sounds crazy, but this stuff is all true. So my point is we see this um, mushrooms and then LSD. And LSD is a, it's a psychedelic sledgehammer. It's an atomic bomb. It's not gentle. Mushrooms, mushrooms are the same thing, kind of. They're like, spinning a roulette wheel you don't know what you're gonna get um and the this is the problem with these type of substances is it's anybody's guess of what's going to happen and we we see people that freak out they can't handle it so the valium thing that's a double thumbs up having a bunch of valium laying around I don't know where you find that these days, but certainly if you were going to be uh, exper experimenting with psychedelics and force feeding it to people, one would want to have a surplus 
of some type of Thorazine, Valium, any kind of drug that's going to bring you down. Valium works wonders for people who are tripping too much and they can't take it. You give them a little Valium and they're fine. So, uh, the thing about these chemicals, like I said, is we have these people, psychonauts, that love to take them and they can handle a real large amount and then, but it gets it gets into irresponsibility, where people are putting it in people's food or drinks and not telling them. This is where. So, if you're a person that is around psychedelics or you have psychedelic drugs or anything like that, don't 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 dose people. That that that's really a wrong thing to do. Okay, even if they like. And they enjoy uh, using psychedelics. Don't surprise those people. That's really, really, that's evil. And we want to be really, really careful with this stuff. I, I talked about it in the Acid Casualty series. If you're a fan of my channel and you haven't watched those videos, check them out, Acid Casualty series on this channel. And I'll also say um, this new thing we had the shrooms and we had the mush the LSD then ecstasy and now it's DMT and that's what they're pushing they've got Joe Rogan out there championing it he's got a picture of his third eye all blown out what's up freak bitches on his channel like we're all little monkeys and we don't know anything and he's this enlightened guy because he smoked DMT when he's a paid shell so I'll say this, playing around with DMT, I don't know how, I, I don't know if I can, like, uh, advocate that. I think people are spinning that same wheel by smoking the stuff till they pass out and not knowing what's going to happen to them. And one out of every thousand or however many of these people that do that, one of them, something really, really bad happens when they go under that spell. And you're just not hearing about it. You you can hear, you can read about it. You can read about these people that go into an uh, emptiness where there's nothing around and it seems like it lasts for a million years <clears throat> and then they come back. You, I mean... You think that's not going to change you? That's not going to affect you? A million years in the void? It sounds crazy, but that's what some of these people are saying. There's horrible, horrible stuff happening. When you're, you're not meeting a, a white, glowing body of light that makes love to every cell in your organism. You're meeting nothing. And you're in a cell of nothing for millions of years. So, reading about people doing this stuff, and then on the other hand, you have people that will infuse the DMT on some smoking herbs like Domania leaf or Mullion leaf uh, and then they're smoking it like one would smoke a pipe and limiting their intake where instead of a rock of pure DMT and smoking that that rock of pure DMT would make like an eighth ounce of this so you're only you're taking a small amount of the DMT almost like smoking pot and you're just getting a little bit of the effects of it that would be something I would advocate as far as fixing your emotional problems, your dream life healing healing your soul all that stuff that the psychedelic stuff does but in a, in a safe way Microdosing LSD or mushrooms is something that I would advocate. So anyway, that's my psychedelic talk about Cary Grant. I don't want to make this video unbelievably long. I will say, as far as all of that stuff goes, it's a it's like I can't recommend anyone go through those experiences. You pay a price. You're not the same person when you come back from that. And you got to really, really be smart and careful. And I mean, when you play with fire, you get burned. And this stuff is a atomic bomb. It is a sledgehammer. 
So, microdosing, taking a tiny amount and experimenting with that, small amounts, never doing one full hit, um, testing your shit, knowing what it is you're putting in your body, obviously. I would say ultimately, extract your own, do, do, your, do your own chemistry and make your own DMT and then infuse that on mullion or whatever your smoking herb of choice, not marijuana. It's a very jealous thing. It doesn't, doesn't want to get into your soul and find something else is in there because then you'll, you'll pay the price for that. But uh, microdose, that type of stuff is going to help you with your addiction issues, whether it's gambling, pornography, or alcoholism, or drugs. These are wonderful tools, but we got to use them right. And my cautionary tale lends to this recipe, which is kind of playing around with it you know just just a little a little tap upside the head rather than that sledgehammer anyway thank you for joining me uh story time carrie grant force fed me lsd and it nearly killed me <laughs> poor diane cannon i don't think she was that good looking to tell you the truth all right you guys see ya